morning, everybody. My name's Darlene, and I have Parkinson's. I'm sitting a further back from you today because I want to tell you about my A-linker again. I have told you about it before. This is my mode of transportation that I like. It, uh, it's a love-hate relationship. Um, I love it for what it is. I hate it because it's very hard to use. Not for everybody, but for me. But I also love that it's hard to use because if it's hard, it means it's doing something good. So I'm going to just describe to you what it is. For those that didn't see the other video. It is to take the place of a wheelchair or a walker. It is to encourage walking in somebody who doesn't do much walking for whatever reasons. It's very popular with people with Parkinson's or people with MS. Those are a couple of groups of people that really make good use of it. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the girl's name. She was in the, what are the, the, the movies that had um, the lawyers, everybody was dressed in pink. Yeah, we just watched it the other day. Um, Reese Witherspoon was the lawyer in it. No, that was the... Uh... Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Okay, so in the first Legally Blonde movie, the girl who played sort of her nemesis, the um, dark-haired girl, she has gone on to have MS. She is now a spokesperson for the A-Linker because she uses hers all the time. Um, that was a long way to get around to say who she was. But anyway, I can't remember her name. Um, it's not a cheap piece of equipment, but it's worth every penny of it. Um, it's not covered by any medical insurance. You have to buy it yourself, but they also have crowd sharing abilities. So if you can't afford it yourself, you can crowd share and try to get someone that will support you in it. Um, I, I was able to very fortunately get my own. My father gave me some money at that time and I chose to spend it on this um, rather than frivolously. I chose that I was going to try and better my health with his money. I thought that was the best use of it. So this machine costs approximately $2,500, give or take. Um, they are made in Korea, I believe. Uh, the company is based in Vancouver. It's a Canadian company. And you can get them in the Netherlands, Germany, um, United States, and Canada, I think. But anyway, I'm just going to show a little bit it doesn't come with the basket. We added the basket. You will notice there's two wheels in the front. That's for stability. It's very heavy in the front and it's stable. There's one wheel in the back. Now, I'm not going to look very graceful today because I've got the brake on here. I'm not going to look very graceful, but oh, geez, I nearly went over on the side. Okay, you're supposed to just step on from the back. I, and I tried to swing my leg over. You see, my legs are extended. I am on the seat. I'm not sitting necessarily, I'm sort of standing on the seat, but it's, it's supporting my body. With one wheel at the back, as I walk, which is how I propel, I'm not getting in the way of two back wheels. So I can walk and propel myself, and I'm up at eye level. So should I go into a store, I'm standing where the shelves are. And it, it's a really good workout, but it's really good for me to do this. Um, like I said, it's a love-hate. It's very hard, but I love it. Now, that said, I have to set myself a goal and a deadline. So I'm going to get off of it. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to tell you my goal and my deadline. Now, geez, I hope I'm not showing too much. Okay. <laughs> um, so far, I've only practiced on this floor. I wanted to go shopping the other day um, and take it into the store with me, but I wasn't feeling very confident that day. So I've decided that I'm going to break down that trip to get myself in confidence. I'm going to learn how to take this machine downstairs on the elevator. That doesn't sound very hard, does it? Well. There's not much room to turn around in the elevator. So if I was to pull into the elevator, 
I would have a very hard time getting myself turned around to pull out of the elevator. So it has been suggested to me that I should back into the elevator and then I'm ready to go. Now, if I'm with another person, which I will be the first few times I do this, um, they can always hold the door for me um, so that I can get in. But if I don't have another person, I have to be facing the elevator to push the button, get my A-linker turned around so that I'm backwards, so that when the door opens, I can go back and hope that I'm not running into anybody that's already on the elevator. So, I'm going to do it a few times with somebody else with me, but my goal is that by the Thanksgiving weekend, we're celebrating Thanksgiving on the Sunday here, um, in Canada, it's in October, so the 10th of October we're celebrating Thanksgiving, and I intend to be able to, by myself, take my A-linker from the suite and go downstairs and come back up again. That said, then giving myself just another little short period of time, by Halloween, I want to take my A-linker into a store. Now my A-linker folds up very easily to go in the car and I want to be able to have my daughter fold it up, take me to the store, and it'll give me some freedom to pick my own vegetables and whatnot. So that's my plan for my A-linker. And um, right now I've just been doing it in the hallways here. So I think I still have time to tell a story. I'm getting a little risque with this story. So if anybody doesn't want to hear that, time to head away. <laughs> All right. When I first got married, my girlfriend said to me, Darlene, we should go shopping to the lingerie store. And I said, there's no need for me to be shopping at the lingerie store. We actually, I was already married. I had been married for a few months. And I said, there's no need for me to go shopping to the lingerie store. And she said, well, everybody should have some lingerie. And I said, my husband would not even notice if I was to wear, I called them little bits of fluff. I said, if I was to go to bed wearing a little bit of fluff, he wouldn't even notice. And she said, oh, are you kidding me? He's a man, of course he would notice. I said, we get into our bed and we like to read at night. And I said, we each take our book and we read for a little bit and then we say our good nights. And I said, we roll over and go to sleep. And she says, yeah, right. What a story she says you tell. And I said, I'm telling you, you won't even notice. Anyway, she wasn't going to be satisfied until she purchased a little bit of fluff for me. So she had this little teddy thing, all lace and pretties and everything else, which for me was just plain uncomfortable. But anyway, I put this little bit of fluff on that night. I didn't even get under the covers. I was making it very easy for Bill. I laid myself out on top of the bed and said to him as he came into the bedroom, I said, well, it's been a lovely day. How about we have a lovely night? And he said, that sounds good to me. And he pops into bed, covers come up and the book comes out. And I said to him, do you see anything unusual about me? And he looks over and he goes, yeah, you're not under the covers. And I said, no, I'm not under the covers. And he says, what have you got on? And I said, I have a little bit of fluff. It's supposed to encourage that, that we're going to be very romantic. And he says, but you're not going to be very comfortable. He says, get your t-shirt. So I got my t-shirt and I got very comfortable. And we could be as romantic as we wanted, whether we had a t-shirt or a bit of fluff. But I laughed because I, I phoned my girlfriend and I said, I told you I didn't need the bit of fluff. <laughs> That's my story for today. This is my a -Linker. I hope to report good things by Thanksgiving. That's only, what, 10 days away. So 10 days or so from now, I'm hoping to be able to get this one down the, down the elevator. And by Halloween, I hope to be in a store. All right. So that's it for today, and I will see you all tomorrow. If I can get around this without hurting myself. All right.